there we go. Now you can hear me. So um, yeah, thank you for the great introduction, Ju. I feel very shy, embarrassed. <laughs> and um, when Ju um, said, um, oh, you know, take part in the, the green chemistry connections with Beyond Benign. I was like, well, I don't really know what I should say or talk about. So I thought I'd talk about a little bit of everything and just encourage people to get involved and that everybody can be a part of this wonderful community around the world. Um, and um, for those of you on social media, I'm uh, Kem Mouse, and so uh, you can interact with me there if you want. So from my accent, you might be able to tell that I'm uh, British originally, so I hold dual nationality, uh, Canadian British. Um, and I've been interested in environmental protection for a very, very long time since I was at high school. And I first came to Canada a long, long time ago to postdoc at the University of British Columbia. But I was first probably introduced to something related to green chemistry during my PhD when I got to work with supercritical fluids, which is an area of, of green alternative solvents. So then I first teaching position was at the University of York in the UK where Professor James Clark had um, started a green chemistry center of excellence. And uh, he was the inaugural editor of the journal Green Chemistry. Um, and so I learned a lot from him and was inspired to kind of go down this route. And um, my husband's Canadian. And so um, we started looking for jobs together. And I ended up in Memorial University of Newfoundland. And so I include this map when I'm in an international setting because people don't necessarily uh, know where Newfoundland is. And so it's on the far northeast corner of North America. Um, next stop, Greenland. And St. John's is on the easternmost edge. So where I am now is about a 30 minute drive from the easternmost point in uh, North America. And the island of Newfoundland is the traditional lands of the Beothuk, who were unfortunately basically um, kind of killed off by colonizers. Um, but it is the unceded land of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. And um, so I I'm working along with others in our community to um, reconcile and work towards um, truth and understanding of um, our place in this wonderful land that is theirs. So in terms of teaching, I know a lot of people here are educators. I teach general chemistry, inorganic chemistry, and uh, green chemistry. Um, I teach some other graduate courses that are very specialized, but they're the main three that I teach at university. And when I was at the University of York, I got a master's degree in um, education at uh, the tertiary level. Um, my research, as Ju mentioned, is in biomass and CO2 utilization, and also in the synthesis of functional and degradable polymers. And so this is uh, the current green chemistry group at Memorial University. So um, I share research space and this is a group of both sets of students with Chris Kozak, who's my husband, and um, Sachel and Megan, they're working on muscle shell waste and Liv um, is working on uh, seaweed and its utilization. Um, Sarah is working on um, fishery waste, so salmon bones mainly at the moment. Uh, Sarah Chima took over some of um, Ju's research and she's co-supervised with Stephanie Macquarie and is doing some biochar research. And um, Michaeli, and um, Winry, who's not in the photo, and Dylan are working on CO2 utilization. 
So really, I think my take home message for those of you that are, you know, frantically probably eating your lunch where you are and uh, uh, maybe juggling many different things in your life is just to say we can all do our part. And I remember when I was a student and even as an assistant professor, I just thought, well, what, what can I do and how can I contribute? And I didn't really feel like I had any power or say of where my career or different things were going. But I think um, just reach out. And I think people are a lot friendlier and helpful um, than we give them credit for. And if, for example, you are in a difficult position, you know, I've experienced academic bullying myself, um, sometimes just a change of scenery and reaching out to some other people. And I found social media's helped me a lot in that way that I've got to meet a lot of um, helpful and supportive people there. So I thought I'll start with um, the local action and I'm sure Beyond Benign will be happy to see uh, their solvent guide in this, uh, in this photo. And so this is stuck to the front of our solvent purification system. And um, you can see listed on there um, the undesirable solvents and the potential alternative um, solvents. And um, we try to use this as best as we can. So for example, as a hydrocarbon solvent in our solvent purification system, for those working on kind of homogeneous catalysis projects, we, we have heptane and um, we have toluene as our aromatic solvent. Um, and um, in terms of doing, say, biphasic extractions in the lab, um, we always use ethyl acetate in place of uh, dichloromethane. And I think um, having this on display, as well as my verbal reminders to students, it does uh, lead to a change in uh, culture. And I think the other way that we can change culture on a local level is to support um, our student advocates. So um, in our department, uh, there used to be um, a student run um, safety committee and uh, supporting them in trying to change the, um, the culture in the different um, labs was useful. Um, and I'm sure um, Christine might mention some of these things as well. It's just uh, when we have group or department meetings, it's a case of reminding people to keep the inventory updated and to declutter. So, um, you know, walking the walk, I uh, did check. I'm off traveling for a while um, in the coming weeks, but I checked in with one of our local safety people just to make sure that I could book our scanner and laptop that we uh, use for updating inventory so that uh, we'll have a few days doing that in the lab when I get back. And uh, on Monday this week, um, our students did have a big lab tidy up, which all adds to safety, which is one of the aspects of uh, green chemistry. So as you mentioned, um, I'm quite knowledgeable about solvents. I um, wrote uh, the first edition of this book published by the RSC, and then I asked Ray Marriott on board to co-author the um, second edition. A lot of university libraries have electronic copies of it. And in the second version, there is a chapter on sort of um, education and outreach surrounding solvents. So trying to engage students on that aspect of um, uh, green chemistry. So one of the things that I've always been interested in, and I think it's partly um, due to my upbringing and what my parents were interested in and what my dad is still interested in, um, he, he, he helps organize a nonprofit in the UK to help out refugees. Um, and um, so equity is something I've been interested in. And obviously the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and many of these can be achieved through green chemistry, um, help us to address um, equity around the world. So um, I had the pleasure of being um, a co-editor to write an editorial for ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering a couple of years ago. 
that focused on um, how green chemistry relates to these goals. And then more recently, since I was appointed as an associate editor of RSC Sustainability, um, I um, wrote an editorial on the sustainable goals 14 and 15, which is life below water and life on land, to address how chemists can address these goals in their research, but also it could apply in their teaching as well, because I think for chemists often they just consider the um, sort of industrial SDGs and not the other SDGs and um, we can do a lot to address um, you know water um, quality, water habitats and so on and um, I think they're a little bit overlooked because people think that's for biologists and not for chemists. So about, I'm thinking now, six years ago, it seems longer, I started to become involved in IUPAC, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And I think most of you might know of them through their work to provide nomenclature for chemists. So how, um, organic compounds are named and how we can all speak this common language together. And um, within IUPAC, there are, there's the executive board, but there's also divisions on particular subjects. So division two is the division for inorganic chemistry. Um, division four is the division for polymer chemistry. And then there's a division of chemistry in the environment. Um, but there's like eight of these divisions. And then there are also committees. So these tend to be more interdisciplinary in their work. And um, there is one that's an interdisciplinary one on green and sustainable chemistry. And then where this is an international organization, um, the different countries around the world subscribe and then they have national representation and there are national representatives on these divisions and committees. So one of the things we, we try to do within the union is to make sure that people from all over the world are represented. And then there are task groups and task groups are open to everybody to work on projects together and you do not have to be in a country that's subscribed to IUPAC to be involved in a task group or even involved in IUPAC in any way at that time to sort of suggest a project and get um, involved. And so um, anybody who wants or has questions about IUPAC, I'd be very happy to answer them in the breakout room. The standing committee that I'm chair of is called CHEMRON, which stands for Chemical Research Applied to World Needs. And what they primarily do and historically have done is worked on um, conferences. And these conferences are a little bit different from a regular conference in that we really try to get all stakeholders involved and so there'll be academic and industrial people, non-governmental organizations and government representation on these things. And the most recent one was held as a hybrid meeting in 2021 and it was held in Nigeria. So one of the things we're working on now is to try and keep these in emerging economic regions or places where people might not normally go to a conference. And this is a photo that Liv Sibnes, a member of our committee, took at a site on the outskirts of Lagos where um, waste, including e-waste, was um, being dumped. And so in addition to the actual conference taking place, there's something called a Future Actions Committee, and they work to um, try and um, make sure that there is something productive that comes out of the conference rather than just everybody going, oh, that was a nice conference and going home and never thinking about it again. So um, two of the outcomes we've been working on this year and towards the end of last year is a resource page on e-waste. And so this is just a snapshot at the top of that page um, where you can find out all sorts of information on that. And at the same time, we're working on a special issue for Chemistry Teacher International, which is an 
open access journal, but for this special issue, the, um, the fees have been waived. And uh, hopefully this special issue will be out in December this year and will include um, ideas for incorporating um, the concept of e-waste and also just green energy into teaching labs, classrooms and high school. Uh, one of my favourite IUPAC projects is the Global Women's Breakfast that many of you will probably have heard of. And um, this is a map and the little hearts represent all the breakfasts that took place around the world. And I've been involved with this since 2019. And Laura McConnell, who works for Bayer Crop Science in the US and Mary Garson, um, they're kind of my two inspirations and uh, I wish I could be more like them. They seem to have so much energy. Um, and um, we wrote an article about um, the Global Women's Breakfast that was published last year. And why am I talking about this in um, Green Chemistry Connections? Well, it relates to one of the sustainable development goals, which is gender equality. And I think it helps us to uh, realize how much we can all contribute by taking part in events like this. And internationally, we can get our own role models and kind of teams assembled. Uh, this is a little flyer and graphic that Ju prepared in my um, group. Um, when she was there, um, when we were having our first breakfast in uh, 2019. So again, I'm happy to answer questions on that. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on this because uh, Zhao will be talking about this uh, in the second uh, session later this afternoon. And um, this is, I'm involved with the uh, Global Conversation on Sustainability. And also I've been involved with the RSC poster Twitter poster conference and uh, there's a hashtag RSC edu uh, there's a lot um, of posters with a chemical education flavor to them that are posted during the uh, uh, poster conference. And I found it a great way, and my students hopefully as well, I found it a great way to uh, build your network. And if you're lucky, um, Errant Science will make a little graphic for you. Um, I was gonna choose one that was prepared for somebody in my group, but then I thought, well, I'm talking about IUPAC. I thought I'd choose this one about uh, um, terminology because uh, there's often a few uh, IUPAC posters at the RSC poster conference. This is my second last slide. I apologize for talking too much. Um, and um, I just want to promote a little bit the 27th Annual Green Chemistry and Engineering Conference. It's a hybrid conference, so you can still, if you, you know, can't afford to go to Long Beach, you can still register and take part in that um, online. Um, IUPAC, um, I've been involved with publishing in Chemistry International, which is a news magazine that they have that is open access and open for contributions. Um, and then they have two other journals. And um, back when I started my career and met James Clark at the University of York, and he was the editor for Green Chemistry, um, I never thought or imagined myself that I'd be involved in publishing and be an associate editor but there I am now. And so I think um, don't underestimate yourself and what you can contribute. Um, and um, do get in touch if you're looking for somewhere to publish educational materials related to green and sustainable chemistry. I think we'd be very happy to uh, consider them because uh, SDG4 is quality um, education. And um, yeah, so hopefully um, I, you know, taught, taught you something new. Um, but if you have questions about um, green chemistry education, research, team building, communication, publishing, anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them in the uh, breakout room later. <laughs>